Now, the National Commission for Civic Education, NCCE, has established that the knowledge of the citizenry on corruption perception, accountability, and structures for the rule of law is very limited. This is the outcome of a new research conducted by the Commission to assess the citizens' knowledge and understanding in those areas. The latest report on what the Commission terms accountability and rule of law program will be launched at on uh, the you know, November 29. But what happens after the launch of this report and to what end? Joining me in the studio is the Director of Research at the NCCE, Dr. Henretta Asante Safon, to tell us more. Welcome, ma'am, to join us. Thank you very much. Now, um, first and foremost, what informed the need for this research? Yeah, thank you and good morning to your viewers. The fact is that we have come to realize that when it comes to tackling the issue of corruption, there's a lot of attention on government officials and people at the very top. But we realize that the fight goes beyond just looking at institutional response. Everybody in Ghana has a role to play when it comes to fighting corruption. And this informed the need for getting the citizen's view and then trying to educate everybody on the need to fight this canker. Mm. So how did we arrive at this conclusion that our knowledge on corruption and these issues is very limited? We undertook a research, as you have earlier alluded to, which was a nationwide one, interviewing over 8,000 respondents across the length and breadth of the country. And this has informed the need for us to go ahead with some level of education. It was a nationwide one in all 10 regions, in all 20, 216 districts, and the information is valid enough and uh, representative for us to carry out any form of education needed. So how did you engage the citizens? Was it a questionnaire? What, what did you do? The survey was undertaken by the use of a structured questionnaire, which had questions on all three themes of the program. Uh, there were themes on uh, corruption, there were questions on accountability, and even on environmental issues as well. And mm. it, 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 as I said, it covers the whole nation and the findings are very representative. And it gives us a lot of insight as to where the gaps are in terms of addressing particularly the canker of corruption. Now, this survey gives a lot of gravitas or grounding for a perception as Ghanaians have had generally about our patriarchal society. When someone gets a position, people expect him to be a benefactor to society generally. But what have you been able to establish in terms of the reasons for our low knowledge about corruption generally? I think the issue is the gap in education. The fact, as you have already uh, mentioned, is we have come to understand and accept some of the practices, which some, some corrupt practices as normal. And we had to go out. Interestingly, what we found in this study, which we would, we would really uh, talk more about after the line tomorrow, is the fact that, yes, indeed, people see certain cultural behaviors, bribery, as a very common practice, even though it is corruption, it's become such a norm within our system. Mm. And so going forward, we need to demystify and let Ghanaians know that bribery or just saying thank you for something that somebody has done that doesn't require payment is wrong. Mm. And we all need to fight against that. But it's very cultural, isn't it? It is to an extent, but it, we don't have to accept it as it is. Because corruption has a lot of uh, influence and negative effect on our economy. So we have to work on our culture so everybody gets access to the needed resources that we all need as a country. Mm. Now, being a, an organization that is um, geared towards education, information gathering, naturally, uh, like you have been saying, I would expect to hear education as one of the things you'd like to do with the report. Yeah. But apart from education, what else do you think we must do to get rid of this cultural issue? In, in the study, we actually sought the views of the participants. And in fact, we, going forward, we really want to work with what the people are saying. Education came on top, as you have already said. but people really want institutions that are mandated to punish those who engage in corrupt practices to be given stiffer, very stiffer punishments. And our policies and structures in place to fight corruption going forward has to work. Mm. And I think outside education, there should be stiffer punishments for those who engage in one form of corruption or the other. Well, um, before we, we let you go, one of the things that has been blamed 
for lack of punishment, as you mentioned, is a weak political will and the fact that some institutions are so under the influence of the presidency that you find that it's difficult to prosecute state and public officials. Do you think that with the introduction of an office like the Independent Special Prosecutor, we would be able to see a solution to this issue? Yes, we, we are all looking forward to something different to be done with this institution in place. I'm sure the, the, the present government has put in place a lot of structures and uh, at least having that office in place alone tells us that going forward something better has to come out of it. So we are all looking forward to a better and a more appropriate way of sanctioning those who are found culpable when it comes to corruption. Mm, so when you say different, a better and more appropriate way, what are some of the specifics? Yes, the, that body is going to work with some policy guide, guidelines. And in fact, whatever is written on paper, we are looking forward to it coming into fruition mm. going forward. And will the NCC be willing to work with this organization in whichever way possible? Of course. And the NCC, I, I must say that this uh, research has come out of a whole consortium of organizations which are working towards achieving a program, which is the Accountability Rule of Law and Anti-Corruption Program. So within that bigger umbrella, there are some institutions within that umbrella which are going to really see to it that there's that level of prosecution. NCC doesn't have the mandate to go ahead or support so much of prosecution. Ours is more for education. But under ARAP, there are, there's a judicial service and a number of uh, shrads and others are all in there to support the fight. So we are very certain that with this baseline survey that we have and with other partners on board, Ghana is going to be a better place when it comes to fighting corruption. So tell us more about ARAP. ARAP is, uh, the full name is Accountability, Rule of Law and Anti-Corruption Program. It's an European Union funded program, a four year program, that is basically looking at getting a better governance within Ghana in the area of fighting corruption. And in fact, fighting corruption in all angles, including education, institutions are also going to work to ensure that there is, as I said earlier on, that there's prosecution of cases. We see some kind of results when it comes to fighting the, can the canker. And so ultimately, it is aimed at working towards people getting involved in the whole fight and getting institutions which are mandated to solve the issue of corruption working and working better. Mm -hmm. So um, since there are different institutions involved, and we've mentioned already that prosecution is one of the things that we need, yeah. uh, what element of ARAP is dedicated to making sure that we are seeing more people punished for what's doing what is wrong? The judicial service and uh, other anti-corruption agents which are in the area of prosecution have some, ha are going through some level of capacity building to understand better what it takes to actually walk the talk. Mm. And so going forward with these kind of capacity building and then the need for us to track progress, we expect that at the end of the four years, whatever they have received from the beginning of the program is we, we, really, we really see results when it comes to their activities. Which is one complaint that a lot of people make about programs like this. We go for these programs, we go for these workshops, we come back, we don't really see the results. How different is this going to be? This study, in fact, is a baseline of the whole program, and we're hoping to have another follow-up study to track progress. Mm -hmm. In fact, if we should track progress and come up with a report which is almost the same as what we have now, then we wouldn't have made any progress at all. So under the program, we are really working towards seeing some level of impact, mm. at least within the next four years. Mm. Right, but right. Um, th I think there's a lot more that we could go into, but tell us about uh, tomorrow. The launch is tomorrow, right? Yes. Yeah. So what should we expect at the launch? We, 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 we want Ghanaians to get some level of information on what the citizenry perceive as corruption, what their knowledge levels are, their perception on what the gaps are in fighting corruption, and then their feedback on what we should do going forward. And it's mm. going to really inform our civic education activities. It's also going to inform institutions to act better on what the people feel should be done instead mm. of addressing corruption. Mm. Again, you yourself have said that the people expect to see prosecutions. And so mm. I'm hoping that with this ARAF program, we'll begin to see some work. 
Great. in that area. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank you. Henrietta Asante Sapo. She's the Director of Research at the National Commission for Civic Education, NCCE.